Hi there, and welcome to our fifth episode of Keen Minds podcast based on NBC's The Blacklist. And we are tackling um, The Blacklister number 105, The Linguist Concern. We are, uh, I am Tessa. I'm uh, not a shipper. I'm a theorist. I love the Keens individually and separate. And I am Jen, a.k.a. Takata Cycle. And uh, I am a shipper. I am a Keen Squared shipper. And I do enjoy all the characters of the Blacklist, same as Tessa. And uh, we try to go with this from from a general idea of looking at the character development of the various characters and through the lens of the Keens and how they react to the Keens and deal with the Keens throughout the episode, as well as the parallels that we see and the themes that we see running through each episode and through the Blacklist as a whole. One of the key things is that uh, we both think that the Keens embody a lot of the of the principles of the blacklist, of the of the themes, the symbols, the subjects of the blacklist. And with that, let's dive in. Did you like the episode? I did. I was much happier at the end of this episode than I was last week's episode. I, I, I thought so. I found fewer pieces of my heart shattered all over the floor this week. Were you happy with the uh, with the conversation? Let's get it out of the way so you get your, your shipper heart going <laughs> and mend it up in pieces. Uh, okay, are we going to start on the, uh, the just, common Let's just touch quickly on the reconciliation. Okay, I, I actually really liked it. Um, I, I wasn't sure exactly what to expect because, I mean, sometimes you set expectations too high and they just don't have time because, let's face it, Tom and Liz are not the focus of the show, and as a Keen Squared shipper, I continuously joke, that was a great episode, need more Tom. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, and sometimes you set the expectations too low when they surpass them like crazy, mm-hmm. which happened several times last season, which is always fantastic. Um, but I, they took a different direction than I expected, but I really enjoyed it, because it was... I, I, I got the impression, as far as I can tell, because I can't tell if Tom's in the same clothes. He has a jacket on over his, his shirt, but it looks like Liz may be in the same clothes as she was in during their, their fight in last week's episode. So, And Tom doesn't look like he slept a wink. So I, I kind of get the impression that Liz never came home uh, after, after their bickering, because they don't sound like they've actually seen each other since all of that, much less mm-hmm. reconciled. And um, so I really enjoyed the fact that that they don't sound like they've talked about it and Liz has had a cooling off period I think it shows a lot for her and her character growth that she she may not be able to quite pull it all back just yet but she can at least she's introspective enough now to at least acknowledge you know if I were in your place if the roles were switched I would have done exactly what you did and so I really cannot pass mm. judgment on you and I think that says a lot for Liz's character growth which as much as I love my fluffy keen squared scenes in which you know they hug on each other and love on each other I love those but that character growth for Liz and with the weight that's on them right now with their daughter mm-hmm. missing and everything I think that was the best route they could have took because it it showed how solid they are, and it it just felt real. I mean, this is a, mm-hmm. a couple yes. that is under tremendous stress, who broke under that stress, but it's not the end of the world. They both understand where they are and how much they mean to each other and where their focus is. And that's, mm-hmm. I think it felt very realistic there, the way that it, they, they <clears throat> reconciled that. I tend to agree with you. I think that that uh, that was a well managed scene. It it didn't go all all fluff and and happy because it wouldn't have been realistic. I mean, this is people under tremendous stress, and uh, I think it made sense. And uh, talking about stress, now let's go back into uh, Sarah into Samara and Aram because that was really another. Uh, interesting twist, especially after last week when we see Samar so angry and and um, Aram, Aram just slamming the door on her. And the interesting thing is when they the, their first scene together in this episode, it wasn't even. I mean, it was none of this. Are we talking? Is this okay? They just Aram kind of just tried to act like it didn't actually happen. <laughs> and I mean, it probably didn't help that. Samar walked in on him having a illegal Skype conversation or uh, FaceTime conversation with his girlfriend in the middle of the post office. 
I, I thought that that was very interesting. And you know that I am of opinion that Elise is a spy. Because it is, it is fairly obvious to me that Kirk is staying ahead of everyone by having eyes and ears or eyes or ears in the in the post office. And that's, the, she's very convenient at that point. And my question has been, is it too obvious that she's a spy? To I, us it is, but not for the casual viewer. You know, as we were talking, my... My sister is is a casual viewer. She's a you know very devoted viewer. She hasn't missed an episode. Uh, my gift to her, I think, for her last uh, birthday was the three sets of the three um, seasons of the Blacklist, and she was thrilled with it. She, but she's a casual viewer. You know, she calls me later to like get over things because some things just fly over her head. She's not into it that deep, and she was like. Elise, who's Elise? It's like Aram's girlfriend. Oh, Aram has a girlfriend? Oh, that girl in the apartment. Ah, no, she cannot be a spy. Why? She's all the way over there. Yay, and she's calling Aram. And somehow she gets the Mars phone number. I want to know how she gets an FBI agent's phone number without her knowledge. Not only that, exactly. How Did did she go through Aram's phone? (laughs) I think so. And I think that she installed spying software in Aram's computer. And I think that not only she called Samar, I think she called Wrestler. Otherwise, how could Wrestler have known about all these things? Well, I think the that date. I think that that came from Samar's conversation because Samar was talking to her when she got into the lift with. Oh, the in the elevator. Yeah, and so I, I think they probably had that discussion. I think at this point they've kind of moved on from them, thankfully. Uh, well, I mean, you you and I disagree on that, Philly. I was not a fan of the uh, Samaran wrestler experience. I uh, I actually was, believe it or not. I I actually liked them. Um, I always thought that there was a little something going on, and I've been saying it, and people have been looking at me like, "Are you crazy?" But no, I ha- I have been seeing things ever since they met. Um. A more subtle on wrestler. Wrestler is obviously not, not you know, wow, whoa, you're dull, like Aram did. That's one of my favorite lines. But I, I do see something there. But definitely, to me, it's that goes with that saying. Like, I think that what we're looking at is Elise is a spy. I mean, she's super sweet. And um, what happened last time we had a super sweet significant other, <laughs> adorable, super sweet significant other? With someone, with someone saying something is not right here, and and you may not be able to pinpoint that, but there is something like like wrestler. Wrestler was always saying there is something wrong about Liz. There is something wrong about Tom. He may not have known what it was, but he was correct in assessing that. You know, his instincts told him that. I I don't remember who it was, but someone on Tumblr was joking that they just need to start vetting everyone through Tom. That every time someone starts dating, someone vet them through Tom. Tom will be able to see it. Well, yeah, that takes me to another point, but we're going to go on a tangent there. So, yes, I think that that is a very good idea because, uh, honestly, that that seems, besides the point that she seems a little too sweet and ditzy. I, I made that comment to a friend today that, for, I mean, and don't get me wrong, Aram's a little, he's one of those people that's just so brilliant, he's all over the place. Mm-hmm. And so I, I could see that a little bit, but I just don't feel like... Oh, you think song... that describes us? Because sometimes we are all over the place. <laughs> I hope that means I'm intelligent. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> see if the IQ matches. <laughs> um, well, we're not going to match to Aram, that's for that's sure. That's fair. <laughs> I don't think I'd match to most of the people Mine's on this show. genius. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, so granted, I'm not saying that she's got to have an off-the-charts IQ to be able to keep up with him, but I just, I don't feel like she's a very good match. I don't, I mean, and it could be that I just don't know her yet. I mean, and opposites attract. There are so many things that are is wrong with it. Just something sits wrong with me with her, and I don't trust her, and I don't know if that's the the blacklist has made me untrusting of new people <laughs> on this show. No, no, she, she to me just she has all the wrong. She's like got like lights she's, flashing, she's, like she's arrows. She's too perfect. She's too perfect. 
Yeah, she's cute and she's into exercise like a ram and she's ditzy not to know how to put a dishwasher. And that was such a convenient thing to make him a little call. And then she sees Samar and she calls Samar. It is so obvious. You know, and, and she even appears non threatening to Samar. It's too much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right it's there with much. you. <laughs> I don't yeah. trust Elise. <laughs> and for and for the casual viewer? Because I got my limbus test of, of casual viewing. That's my sister. She's a spy. She's, right. you know, I, 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 I have no other way of knowing, you know, how on earth does Kirk stay one step of red? We have not seen anybody staying consistently ahead of red. Nope, red wouldn't right. have survived. I think you're right. And and I I do hope it, I, I, this sounds horrible for a rom but i do hope it's elise because otherwise who else is it i mean because it's not going to be anybody else in the task force it's not going to be it's Liz not going to be wrestler it's not going to be it's not going to be samar because otherwise she would never have solicited a transfer she would have been needed there right uh it's not um it's not cooper it's not liz it's not tom. it's not liz and it's not tom despite what a lot of people who don't like tom think it is oh, no. because tom it wouldn't every- make any sense tom would go and kill this man if he had any intel on him oh if you ask some people tom works for every villain that has ever shown up on the show i know he's, and- he's so overworked <laughs> just very responsible man he's responsible for everything that goes wrong on the blacklist that's tom king for you folks that's tom king <laughs> yep uh, indeed but on on reality i think that that um aram is being set up for losing a bit of of his um his naivete his his uh his bad guy virginity in a way yeah i i kind of think that's true it'll be interesting if if this does pan out those awkward conversations with Liz and Tom and you know so about that honey trap moment well I, it's interesting because I think that they're they're drawing some parallels between uh, Liz and Tom between between Liz and 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 Ram both being targeted by some but not not in the same way because Tom was there to protect Liz um, and uh, I, this woman, I don't think, is there to protect that Ram. No, I do not get that impression. If she's spying on him, I doubt his uh, well-being is mm. her focus. How about uh, uh, Samar? I thought that Samar's attitude was very interesting because she was very, very upset. And I think that moment from Ram really snapped her. Oh, I think so, too. And I, I, it was really very much a... The lady doth protest too much with her the entire episode with no this isn't about her this is not about me being jealous i'm not jealous why would you think i'm jealous and wrestler's just looking at her like stop <laughs> I'm not i that did stupid. thought though however that when she says and she asks us like that's not the first time she says it in this one i thought i believed her i thought that in that moment before all her confused feelings for Ram and, and Wrestler and her situation, I think in that moment, she actually was acting from from friendship. She was actually concerned. And I would not be, uh, I would not be surprised if she says no to any transfer because she's concerned about Ram. That's a possibility. Especially if she starts getting... Because if anybody is going to get the vibes off of that, I think it's going to be Samar. Because she is so close to Aram. I mean, Wrestler and Aram are not that close. He's getting a kick out of the fact that Aram finally has a girlfriend. You know, but other than that, they're, they're not overly close. But Aram and Samar are. We've seen that little photograph that Aram used to keep mm-hmm. on his on his, uh, mm-hmm. his refrigerator that had... Just the two of them out having fun, having a you know a meal or what have you. Mm-hmm. I think that there is something there, and I and I do not, I I do not, I think that that there is a little bit of jealousy, but I also think there is a little bit of concern. And I thought that there was an interesting parallel because you're also getting some parallels now between Samar and Wrestler. Samar's attitude towards Elise and Wrestler's attitude towards Red, towards Tom. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that one. Mm-hmm. 
you know, they both are concerned with, uh, uh, and Wrestler, I don't think it was so, at the beginning, I think he was just, he didn't like Liz. He was suspicious of Liz. He kept track of what she did. And at the same time, as he became more and more trust, had more trust in Liz, he became more and more concerned with Tom. And I think it was from the same place, a place of friendship, um, you know, that I don't believe in, in. I haven't seen any indication that Wrestler was concerned, but there are people who have seen it. And either way, it works the same way with Amar. There may be some interest in, in, in Aram, but mostly I think that this concern comes from friendship. From, from I, There's something about that person that I don't like. I, I personally think it's a combination thereof. I mean, because you you would hope that the person you're attracted to, you are also friends with, for the most part, uh, especially if you're working closely together with them. And so, I mean, I, I think it could be a combination thereof. And that brings us to our favorite uh, bromance. I love Tesler. <laughs> I I was so saddened last season. As soon as I realized, I, I was so torn when I... When Liz's fake death happened, and I said, okay, they will not kill Elizabeth Keene. That's not what's happening here. Obvious, and I started piecing it together that episode. Okay, Kaplan was in the right place at the right time, talking to Nick at this time, at this place. And several of us over on Tumblr posted comments about that about the same time. I think there were three or four of us that said Kaplan did it. And I just remember being so distraught over if Tom knew or not because part of me wanted him to the other part of it didn't and I said well if he did then that destroys any of my hopes for my bromance that I've needed so long now and wrestler will never trust him again and the direct opposite happened it seems like wrestler actually likes him better now <laughs> I think it's it makes sense because once you if you know that's what I like about my rubber banding theory and the taking Liz away from evil once he realized that Tom was trying to give her his daughter a normal life. That, for him, gave an enormous respect for Liz and, and for Tom. Well, I think it's several things. And we've discussed this. We've discussed the rubber band theory, and I definitely think that goes into it. I also think that Agnes has a big influence on it. I think that wrestler losing losing Audrey and their unborn child affected him mm -hmm. very deeply. I don't think he's ever quite dealt with those emotions in a healthy sort of manner. And I think that in a way he kind of looks at trying to save Agnes as he couldn't save his own child. So he's going to do this for his, for his friend and his partner's child. And I think that seeing Tom as a father humanized Tom in wrestlers viewpoint to a large degree mm -hmm. before he was just a criminal he was this criminal that had lied to wrestler's partner and he was going to do it again what was the the comment and it, it's it's a comment that a lot of a lot of people online tend to make and i have many arguments i've written metas mm -hmm. feel free to go read them if you'd like but you know that he he'd laid hands on liz and that there's no coming back from that mm -hmm. was the statement um that wrestler made and and i i think that he really has a habit of boxing people in and saying well they did this so they must be this and Tom Keen is not someone you can box in very well he has so many layers he's it, it it goes very hand in hand with the promo that they released a while back for for redemption where you see these you know he's he's a killer but he's a father he's an operative but he's a husband you know it just the, these things that don't seem to mesh well and yet they do for him that he is all of those things, and he does all of those things fairly well. I mean, he's human, so he screws a lot of it up, but, you know. And I think that when Wrestler, like, it really keyed in with Wrestler, this man loves his child and would give the world for his child. It, it really humanized him in a way that it never could with Tom just loving Liz. And so I think that that's a, and it goes into the fact that, like you said, that Tom was trying to give his child a chance at a normal life. I think that that wrestler is working the issues that he had 
when Audrey died and she was pregnant through here. I think this is the way he's dealing with. I, I, I don't think that wrestler is the kind that will go and go to a therapy or something else. I think that he would work it by doing this. You know, I could see him donating his his efforts to uh, finding lost kids or something like that. You know, in his spare time, um, I that's the way I think that that a character like wrestler would deal with with this kind of of problems. Oh, I agree. I agree. I think this will help help him find a certain level of peace. Mm. When when they find Agnes, that will help him find find some peace within himself, and that's that's fantastic. It was. It's so interesting to watch him right now because you can tell he's going, I can't do this. This is illegal. Don't ask me to do this. But as soon as Tom drops, this is about Liz and Agnes. And wrestler's going, oh, fine. Here, have a file. Here, have a lead that we couldn't follow. Here. <laughs> I I found that that fascinating now that you mentioned that because it was, to me, was another parallel. And this episode was so ripe with parallels it was like salted with them it was so great to analyze because here we are remember at the beginning when wrestlers started bending the rules and giving Liz this or that when he shouldn't have and I a lot of people said oh it's all about Liz it's about his attraction to Liz and I said no it's about the case he goes about the case and I think that this is the proof here he is he's bending the rules to help Tom and his child. Well, I agree. And and I said, I think it was either last week or the week before, I made the comment that um, the, the the relationship, and, and granted, I, I've seen some of the attraction that, that Keeler see with rest to Liz. I just don't see it returned in, in the other direction. Mm -hmm. But, and so, I mean, obviously not in that, but I do think that that, that basic format of the way wrestler reacted to Liz and the, the way it, it progressed and the way he reacted to Tom are very similar. You, you can find a parallel there in which with Liz and wrestler in the pilot, there was a lot of distrust and it moved. And gradually once she won his trust, it, it takes a lot to win Donald wrestlers trust. But once you do, it's, I'm not going to say unshakable, but it's, it takes a lot for him to work mm -hmm. against you. He's, even if he doesn't do it correctly, because when he was chasing Liz down in season three, he thought he was helping her. In his mind, I, in his I heart, think at he, times, I think at times he thought he was he was helping her. There, I think that that was a rubber banding. There were sometimes he thought he was really helping, and in the other times it was this anger that took over. And that could I, be. And that could be. But um, I. I I feel like for the most part, when when you, in general, because, I mean, wrestler human, therefore you can't really flatten him out into just, you know, this is always the way he's going to he's react a, to He's a knife, he's a, a, a knight in a white uh, horse with the <laughs> no. armor. No, he. I think that he's, that would be very uninteresting. I think that he's he's a human, he's very well drawn as a, as a human character. And I think that that, to me, makes perfect sense. There were times in which he was all about helping Liz. And there were times when he was like, Wendigo, no, if this guy can't find her, Wig then can arrest her. You know, there was it's, it's it's human if you think about it. His father killed by by marking a correct cop, and now his own partner turned to be a correct cop. So it's it's for him that must have been a horrifying thing. It's like he was he not only was his father, he was worse. Yeah. I mean, but anyway, what I was saying was that the wrestler and Liz that there was a lot of distrust at the beginning and then slowly he started warming to her and then mm -hmm. and then We've got to the point now that he's willing to, you know, to bend the rules for her, that he's willing to help her and this and that. And he trusts her. He doesn't always agree with her, but he does trust her for the most part. And he's not nearly that far with Tom because they haven't had a, nearly as much time working together. But I do think he's working towards that with him. And it's, it's, it's an interesting thing to watch Donald Wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> start to finally look at Tom Keen as something more than just the bad life choice that his partner's making, you know, because that's really all I, I saw him that, as for a while. I, I think that they're both men are getting a, um, and a, a, a kind of, um, I wouldn't say admiration, 
but an understanding and a respect for the other one. There's definitely respect. There is, yes. There is, there is a, now that you can see how Tom says, just let me help. And, and when Red, Red Wrestler says that they're doing the best, he says, yeah, I know. And I believe Tom when he said that. It was an, a, a, an empty thing. He was really believing that they were doing the best. And for Tom, that's a lot, that, that's a lot of respect. And the way they talked to one another, he wasn't, he wasn't demanding. He was, in, he was just asking. And, and I think that, that this is a nice continuation from that scene in the cabin after they had that sadly deleted fight. Oh. Well, I mean, if you think about it, Tom, from the background that he's coming from, would have very, very little respect for any sort of police figure. And Wrestler is 500% a cop. I mean, he's not in the intelligence community. He is a cop. He's a federal agent, but he's still a cop. And I could see Tom having a pretty natural dis- distaste for someone like Wrestler because of that. Because Growing up, he was always in trouble, he was always on the wrong side of the law, and then he was trained as a a covert operative, so he was always at odds with the law in Mm -hmm. various points of his life. He probably views cops as, as a young child, as the people that, you know, were not helping him when he was in trouble and needed an adult to step in and save him. These people that were supposed to never did... And he was always, you know, going through bad situations mm-hmm. in the foster system. And then as he got older, the people to outsmart and the people he consistently did outsmart. And so he probably doesn't see them as very intelligent either. Much, but I much like this... Red reacts to, to the but, task but force I the think it's it has been very interesting to watch those two come to have a respect for what the other one does. Because this is exactly as you just put it. This is two people that come to one problem from completely different points of view. And and I think what, what we're seeing is through a very conflictive relationship at the beginning is they're beginning to understand that they're, and I think that, that for wrestler, that is a huge step. That's wrestler saying there are things that I cannot do through the law. Oh, I agree. And for him, that is major. That really is major. And for Tom to come and ask for things, not demand, not try to take them, ask for things. That to me also speaks of an understanding and, and, a, and a respect for wrestler. That is, to me, is one of the most fascinating relationships right now on the show. I think he was shifting gears, Tom was, a little bit. I think that he, he did what he felt like he had to last week when he called his old buddies and went in and traced the, the feed and ran into the dead end. I think he did what he felt like he had to. And, and I think also, that that r- gained him the admiration of, of Wrestler. Might have. I don't even know if Wrestler knows he did it, to be honest. Um, but I do think that when Liz got so angry at him, it, it forced him to reevaluate. He realized, one, he did go behind his wife's back, which he had promised he would never do again. And so while he is human and he makes mistakes, and he probably thought that was, you know, it, it should have been... He should have gone about it in a different way. And so he's shifting gears and he's going to wrestler who is a legal route versus going to to former compatriots of his that are taking illegal routes. He's taking the legal route by going to wrestler, asking for a way in and taking he's making a better choice. I'm not mm-hmm. going to say to get on Liz's good side because I don't think that was it, but I think it's just a reevaluation. I think that's what he does is that, you know, he screws up and he reevaluates things and he tries to shift what he's doing to do better. Yeah, really, really. Um, I, and for both men, because I think then it is as, as momentous for wrestler as it is for Tom. Oh, I agree. And it's very interesting that after all the work that Tom and Cooper did, we have not seen Cooper and Tom speak since they've come back. No, I think I think Cooper seen... is 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 really hurt because he was he had. I think that the Cooper got a lot of of affection and and I think has some respect for Tom as well because I mean he ran him as an operative in a in send him on a mission 
that had baffled the FBI. They have not been able to get anything stick. And they were probably, as a cop, he was probably concerned seeing that there was nothing they could do and this crime ring was taking all these young men and basically chewing them up and spitting them all over the mountains. And here it goes. Tom goes and the problem is solved. If you need something done, call Tom Keen. <laughs> exactly. And so I think that there's that Cooper and Tom, uh, it's like Cooper and, and Liz, we will have to have a conversation about that because I think that, that Cooper was deeply, deeply hurt. I think he understands, but he was hurt. I agree. I, yeah. I definitely agree. But I do think it's interesting that we've shifted gears. And I am, as much as I love Cooper and as much as I think that Tom needs you know, an older male in his life that is not trying to shoot him in the head every time he screws up. I <laughs> I mm-hmm. do love that he's going to wrestler and the wrestler's running point on this and that the two men, like you just said a few minutes ago, have are forming a respect for each other that's that's even beyond just helping each other for Liz's sake. They they are forming a bond there that hopefully will continue through. I really would love to see Diego take a an episode over on Redemption. I think that would be hilarious. I mean, hilarious is probably not the right term, but there would be some great moments there of watching Wrestler get tossed into Tom's world versus Tom getting tossed into Wrestler's world. Yeah, that would be awesome. So, okay. Would you like to move into Liz and Red? Because that was Oh, let's go there. All right. So I was okay until I realized I... My brain works in very odd, odd ways. I don't always understand it. And sometimes it just likes to rearrange. Gloss over bad things? Oh, well, that too. Uh, Kind of like Tom and his boat issue. Um, (laughs) What does he do after he's caught on a boat for four months? He goes and buys a boat and puts better memories into it. Um, (laughs) No, but my brain tends to... That is interesting. I haven't thought about that. Yeah, Tom, I am convinced Tom likes to take horrible memories and replace them with something better. That that's Mm. that's his go to. And I really would love to see Liz just sit down with him someday and go full on shrink (laughs) and him just go stop. We've talked about this. Stop. (laughs) Um, Anyway, red, red, not Tom. Mm. Um, (laughs) So my my brain does this really funny thing where sometimes it just sort of replaces things it, it, it takes a puzzle piece and it replaces it into a different spot and I didn't realize until my my rewatch today that when Liz calls when she's talking to Tom on the phone and Tom goes no no that's not where Alexander Kirk is and she goes I have to call you back calls Dembe Dembe says you know it's Elizabeth Red waves it off and he goes it's a trap Red reaches out, takes the phone, and snaps it shut. For some reason, my brain equated what Liz said to Dembe. As if he was talking to Red. Yes, and then he just hung up on her after she finished. When I was re-watching it, I just went, wait. He hung up on her. He didn't even bother to give no, her the time he did of day. Not. And then he turned around after the explosion happened. When she calls back, he implies heavily that she may have set them up. And I got so angry. And every time I think that I might... I love Red. Red consistently switches as my second favorite character with Wrestler. Like, th- those two continuously shift as my second favorite. And... They're my first, so they're... Uh, well, <laughs> Tom's my first. I love, I, think, I, love, I love Red. I And I do. And with Kaplan, I've had a lot of issues with Red because I'm very angry at him. I will always love him. But I'm very angry with him, and I really just want the writers to fix it. I know they have a plan. <laughs> I know that they're doing something on purpose and that they cannot work <laughs> on my expedi- expediated, you know, schedule here of I want it fixed now. But I really do. I need I need to know what Red's secrets are, and I need him to fix things. <laughs> so, mm. But the fact that he didn't give her the time of day she was trying to warn him and then he turned around and blamed her for it and i think he caught himself that this is a little bit absurd stop it and he he thanked her for basically saving his life i just got so angry at him for that because did you he is just 
And I've seen people say that he's slipping, that he's, you know, he, he's losing I don't it. think that he is slipping. I think that he, the red is, is something else. But go ahead. I I don't know what to think. I don't think he's slipping. I Someone made a comment, and we'll, we'll touch on this because it was our question of the week. But someone made a comment on, I believe it was Tumblr. I think it was a uh, writer in white that made the comment. It was about control with him that it is it's a control issue and and i believe you and i have talked about this briefly and i know mm-hmm. i've written about it on tumblr on various different metas that in red's world when he loses control he's a dead man that if he were to lose control of his business of what he does of the way he, things happen he would be a dead man instantly his enemies would smell blood and circle like sharks mm-hmm. and I think right now he feels, if he's slipping, I think he feels the control slipping and he's struggling to remain in control. Kirk is a couple steps ahead, consistently a couple steps ahead. Kirk is very obviously shifting Liz in his direction, Red seeing it. My issue as a viewer, and I understand that there are probably things that we are not seeing yet and that when Red does reveal it finally, we're going to go, oh, I get it. But currently, I don't know those things. So I'm sitting here and going, would you just tell her the truth and explain to her well, why you're doing all of this? <laughs> just... I think that I think that the that what, what I do, because because Fred is my favorite character, and honestly, the one that I find the easiest to get into uh, into the head. I think that that what I tend to do is I tend to think Red is doing this for a reason and then I I make a list of all the reasons that could exist for Red to behave this way. And then I go through them and eventually I find the reason because there, there are not that many options. And I, I don't think that, that there is an issue of Red losing control, and I think he is. But I don't think it is so much him slipping as it is that he is on a... He's in a terrain that he cannot detach his emotions anymore. Because I think that what happened is that there is a bit of jealousy going on. And I think that the Samar and and, and um, Aram and Elias situation is also a mirror of this. There is there is there is a little bit of jealousy here. That baby that baby that Liz was was something that for him was extremely emotional. That's interesting. Yeah, that that definitely does make sense. And, and there is another man claiming his daughter or this this figure, this woman that he have been that he have cared for. And I think that the the fact that that we have a DNA test, which might or might not be, I have a feeling that it is real. That that Kirk is her father. Um, and the reason he's saying he's not yours might have to do with whatever happened in that fire. The very interesting thing, I love Red's wordings, and and Bokenkamp does this, and I think it comes from the mind of Bokenkamp from everything I can see in the interviews, and mm-hmm. and and between Bokenkamp and Spader, I think this is <laughs> this is what creates Raymond Reddington, um, but. You have to watch his wording so carefully. And there was something that jumped out to me in my rewatch. It was, and I, I'm not going to get this verbatim because I've only managed one re- rewatch, mm-hmm. one one full rewatch so far today. And the comment was, if you accept the premise that this man is your father, then I would Then understand. you're in the middle of everything. Yes. And I was just like, that's an interesting way to put it. You know, it's. It's, and that's he's been very careful with the way he refers to it. This man that claims to be your father, if you accept the premise that he's your father. He's never said he is your father, he isn't your father. He he has stated he does not accept the premise. Yes, and that, that is Kirk an interesting is thing. And father. I think that is it comes to to me that comes to maybe maybe Kirk is her father in the sense that he was his biological father, but I've always had a feeling that Liz memories in that fire hide something. And I gotta give some some credit. There is so many um uh, kiss my freckle. There is a lot of other um, blacklisters in Tumblr that have done a fantastic job of of elucidating what's happening in that fire memory. 
I think something horrendous happened to Liz in that fire. Something that made Raymond Reddington assume that once you do that, you're not a father. It doesn't matter what biology says to him because you've done something that is beyond redemption. I and agree. I think that at that point, there is something, because think about it. Rostov thinks that Liz is his daughter, then he thinks he's not, that is red. And if if the moment when he thought Liz was not his daughter was during the fire, what would he have done to her? Or if he had realized in that fire that, that Liz, that Katerina was not coming back to him, or had he realized in that fire or that, that night that Katerina was, that he was a mark for Katerina. But Katerina really didn't love her, didn't love him. Even if Liz was his daughter, he probably said, you're both going to die here. No, I agree. I, I do feel like Red, because Red believes loyalty, uh, value loyalty above everything, I believe is the phrase he uses. Um, mm -hmm. Above all else. Value loyalty above all else. And mm -hmm. he... He, at least, in his own mind, abides by that, uh, whether, whether he does or not, after Kaplan I have severe issues with, but he, he thinks that he does. In his mind, he has never killed someone that, he, that didn't deserve it, and he values loyalty above all else. And so, if Kirk did something that, in his eyes, was disloyal to his daughter, even if he was biologically related it, it wouldn't, just like you just said, it would just negate everything else. And I, I thoroughly agree with that. I think that is a very good possibility because there are so many little phrasings mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, she was never yours to raise is one that, that pops out too. Just obviously Kirk has done something. If he is her biological father, then he has done something that has so set him and, and Red against each other when it comes to Liz, that Red was willing to steal her away, either rename her or just refuse to call her by the name her parents called her, whatever, and think that that was the better option. And something just kind of as a minor side note that I, I cannot remember who said this, so feel free if you're listening and it was you to comment on any of the social media and make claims. Um, it may have been Blacklister, uh, 211 mm -hmm. Tumblr, um, that said, you know, what if Katarina doctored the DNA test and set it up? That if, if Kirk is not her biological father, what if Katarina did that to protect Liz? But this was done, okay, in order to have had a test from Liz, it was either done uh, when, before, when they were, together uh, and if so why did he say there was a time I thought did you or not but now I have the the I have the the proof why would he say that if it had just been a recent thing it has to have been a recent thing otherwise he would have known it was his daughter and I don't believe for one second that Rostov had no idea what Liz was I don't buy that he may not have known for a few years, but once Liz was out in the public eye, I have a feeling he was. In fact, I have a feeling that he was the the puppet master manipulating Berlin. I even think that Fitch's cover for him that became like the fake Decemberist. Because if you think about it, all those big fake bad guys had a fake something taking the blame for the things they were doing, protecting their identity. And it didn't make any sense that an American would be doing the Kirk's bombing and they would be so deep in Russia. But Rostov, the man who benefits so enormously from the fall of the, of the Soviet Union, absolutely, I can believe that. And if he was behind Berlin, that means that he had known where Liz was, at least since Tom um, started to work for Berlin. It could also uh, potentially shed some light on any rumors that Tom heard about Liz's father being alive, whether he yeah. thought that was red, which I, I get the impression after an interview with John Bokenkamp the other day that he feels like it's very, that that comment at the end of season one where your father's alive, 
he seems to believe, and I may be wrong, I mean, I haven't spoken to the man or anything, um, but he seems to believe that it's obvious what Tom meant by that, and the only thing I can think of that's obvious is that, that Tom thought Red was her father, and that was the statement, that he had heard rumors, and so to him, that immediately meant Red is your father, and that, you know, dying, yeah, there was, dying there that was, was his, some... his attempt. There was something interesting in that I don't think we have addressed uh, ever because it hasn't come up uh, regarding that relationship. And that is that in Tom's code book, Red says there was nothing about, very little about his himself and his organization and quite a bit about Liz. Why would Berlin be interested about Liz? Berlin had no ob objective of hurting Liz. He had two years to do so and he never did. So... Obviously, and then he went for Rex's ex-wife and was thrilled when Zoe was found and he thought it was Red's daughter because he thought, great, I'm going to hurt her too. So obviously Berlin did not think that Liz was Red's daughter. And obviously he was trying very hard not to, not to hurt her because otherwise hold her hostage and Red would have come to her. Right. So there was no reasonable expectation of Liz not being hurt unless he was bound not to hurt Liz because he had, because his loyalty was to the man who he thought was Liz's father. And that makes perfect sense that is Rostov, Rostov the one manipulating Berlin to get Liz to, because I think if, if, Liz, if this whole thing started in 1990 and by the Kirk's bombing in 1991, when Red was already gone, they were blaming it on Red. That means that he was trying to get Red killed. Which and would it make just... sense for Kirk. Because, I mean, Kirk, Kirk and Red have been at odds for years, whether they've been physically going at each other or not. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It just is the only thing that makes any sense to me is that... And, why then Berlin would have said, send me things about Liz. So maybe Tom at first thought that Liz's father was alive and he was somewhere out there. And that's why he was asked to send information about Liz because he, whoever was. And remember that now all these things that, that Kirk is saying that that Red said to, to her came from that first season when... Tom was still sending information. So that must have been in that code book. That's interesting. Exactly. So it means that when Berlin was hiring Tom, there was also a concern, send information about Liz. So Tom must have thought whoever wants information about Liz must be her father. Which would or make her sense. Mother. Yeah, which would make it, sense. And, yeah. No, that, that does. And I, I wonder if that's going to come out and be explained because I know some people were very upset over over the interview because he, he made the comment that, that Tom, I don't remember verbatim what he said, but it was something along the lines of Tom doesn't, that it never crossed John Bokenkamp's mind that, that Tom would have information about Liz that he hasn't divulged to her or something like that. Mm -hmm. I know, basically that he was hiding things from Liz still. Um, I mean, and, and I understand that because... Tom has made it very clear that his intentions is not, he does not have an intention to hide things from his wife any longer. That, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> it's, yeah. in the grand scheme of the way that you were, you know, taught a lesson, being gut shot and held on to a, held on a boat for four months and uh, tortured, that's just going to set you on the straight and narrow there. Yeah, I, I think that that is, that is, that goes with that saying that he is not, so which information could Tom have could Tom have passed back then that would have led him to believe that Liz's father was somewhere there in the shadows? And remember, just because Tom said when he sh when he was shot by Liz, your father is alive. And then he goes around and asks Red, because I didn't ask Father's permission, doesn't mean that he believed the same thing both times. He may have thought at the beginning, well, I've been passing information to someone about you. So it's either your mom or your dad, because who else is going to be interested in what you like and what Red is telling you? Yeah. Nobody else. And 
so at that moment he may have thought, well, hey, your father is somewhere out there, or, and then thinking, well, after seeing how Red came out for you and got to exonerate and all this, I'm believing that Red is really your father. And I'm and I, still not convinced that Katerina Rostova's dead. I mean, I... Like, oh, I don't until, think that she's dead at all. Until at all. there's a body, and even on the blacklist, apparently, when you have a body, that doesn't mean death. I mean... And, you know, think about it. What would be the main reason for Rand that Rand was crumbling into pieces when he thought Liz was dead, correct? That's... So there is nothing, there is no question that Red loves Liz. He's not using her. He's He loves her. He may be using her too, but he loves her. Right. And it's not, it's not either or. It's, no, I mean, exactly. It can be not both. with Red. Not with Red. No. And then if we if we go from that basic premise, how on earth can we justify that Red hasn't said to Liz everything he knows? Is he's either then protecting Liz or protecting someone or so or some some bodies that he cares as much as Liz? See and, and I, th- I I think that Kate may for me solidify that Red thinks Katarina is dead. And I, I know that you and I differ sometimes on that. Kate May, to me, solidified oh. that that Katarina is dead in his mind. That that his Hobson choice cost Katarina her life, and you know that that he chose Liz. Ah, uh, see, I have the greatest admiration for Dan for Daniel Knapp. I am in awe of him. I've watched that, and every time I watch it, I'm coming like. Oh my God, the man is crafty. Oh, he is. And like, <laughs> oh no, oh no. Yay, yay. I mean, I I don't know. I I don't know that I can I can agree with you because, well, we can we can go back over to you know when we get those long drawn um hiatus and start going over some of those episodes that are you know that are before us, but they're so fascinating. But to me, it didn't say any of the sort. In okay. fact, think about it. I, um, I th- had he really thought her dead, it means that he wasn't there when she died. Because he first thought that Katerina, look at what he says to Liz first. Your mother walked into the ocean because he couldn't take uh, the idea that the child she loved, she adored, had killed the man she loved. Then, in Cape May, it wasn't about that. It was about she trying to save Liz. So that tells me that he has no idea. Yeah, I I am very... That goes into my whole I do believe red lies to Liz from time to time. But that, like, like we've yeah. talked about, that that's for hiatus. We will delve into that. Yeah. We will get there. We are on such a tangent right now. And, and it's mostly linked. It's, uh, it's... Yeah, well, we have, we, yes, we have linked it because we are drawing now. And it's interesting because as we go along in the blacklist, I think we have to go back into those episodes and make those long leaps of parallels. Oh, absolutely. It, it's, there are so many parallels. Like, they, I, I cannot believe how intelligent how well mapped out these people must have this show and it it's really sad because i'm gonna look at other shows i'm gonna move forward and be really judgmental on other shows past the blacklist at this point it's (laughs) i'm gonna have very little patience for for writers that are not willing to put this much time and effort into their twists and turns (laughs) well this is this is uh you know people tend to forget they call it a procedural and i tend to forget that this is really a mystery It, it may have procedural elements but it's really a mystery and you have to look at it as a mystery and i think that that to me that that going back i think that that the only way that i can explain red it's if if Red is trying at the same time to keep a few people, at least two, Katerina and Liz, safe. And if he tells Liz too much, he risks Katerina. If he doesn't tell Liz enough, then he risks Liz. And I think that's his major problem. That's a reason why he seems to always not tell her enough. I don't know that that is just self-serving. 
Well, there has to be something. And I know that I I have thought in the past, and sometimes I still do think that Red holds things back for a fear of how Liz will react to him. I and I, I've actually written up a meta on this. It's um mm-hmm. it's about the truth and, and the way that Tom and Red both approach mm-hmm. the truth with Liz. And that both of them have had issues over the course of the show in which they are so terrified of losing Liz that they they don't tell her things. And and they I think Red still struggles with this. I do think that some things that he hides from her are out of fear that he that that there is some horrible thing that happened. They say hideous fish. I'm yeah, gonna be exactly. so hideous you're exactly. not gonna ever love me. And and he's afraid of that. He's afraid of of her permanently turning her back on him. I think that's one of Reddington's biggest fears is that he loves this girl, this this little girl that he just always wanted to protect, who now has a little girl of her own that he just wants to protect. With everything in him, everything good left in Raymond Reddington wants to protect Elizabeth Keene and her child. And and I think he's terrified that she she'll hate him. And but I also think that that fear is what is pushing her away. And but I I can't I, I there are times that I can think that's the only thing that's doing it. It can't be it cannot be the only thing because it makes no sense. Uh, it, well, they got to be another they yeah, I do think that, that is a always big make thing. Sense. Human emotions do not always make sense. And that's, that's the true. thing. And and like we've talked about before, Red is usually very good at separating his emotions, but sometimes Liz, Liz is a blind spot. I don't think that he applies to Liz. She's a blind spot for him. And she's a blind spot for him. And she's, she's also a blind, blind spot for Mm-hmm. She's a blind spot for a lot of people, honestly. And, and it's not her fault at all. But it's, it's something interesting that somehow she just ends up that person for people. And um... I, I think that that you're you're on to. I mean, I do think that there is a an emotional component in all this of fear that Red has not to be accepted and loved. I also think that there is a, a practical reason, a, a part of this puzzle we haven't been given, and it has to do, to me, has to do with somebody else that Red loves. So is either Jennifer is Carla is Katerina that is out there someone out there that he also has to protect because we tend to think in terms of we see, we know all of Red's world we don't That's we have true. never been told that we see everything that Red does Red disappears he appears four months later he's doing this he's doing the other we don't know that and he was very clear to Liz. People gloss over that, but he he's told us that when he got attacks on his businesses, he evaluated his vulnerabilities. And she said, me, because she's the narcissistic takeover is me. I'm the vulnerability. And he says, among others, didn't listen to that. So there it is. Ren had some other vulnerabilities that he has to manage not to risk and it's like a it's like a man doing having like four balls in the air and he's trying to juggle them and he has to keep them moving he can't tell the whole truth it's about and that goes back to the control issue it really does and 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 i don't say that in a negative sort of way i say that in a survival sort of way he has to he does he has to be in control because if he loses control not His only world he, all coming down. Yeah, not only he is in trouble, but the people he's protecting, if that's Liz, if that's anybody else, mm-hmm. is going to be in trouble. And he's res- he feels responsible for that. Do we want to lead into Dembe, speaking of responsibility? <laughs> yes, let's go, because <laughs> I was going like to say, if you, if you it, that is a very good moment to go, go into Dembe. Segue. <laughs> segue into mm-hmm. Dembe. So, Dembe. I know... Personally, I've I've been a little put out, and sometimes I I kind of let things slide because I understand that a lot of things get cut from shows, and there's a time limit, and they have to focus on certain things, and I get that, and 
as much as we all love Dembe, he is our strong silent type and he is always there for Red, but the way they handled his grief and his guilt, oh my gosh, his Shantafik. <laughs> that man <laughs> if i ever meet him i just want to give him a huge hug and thank him for everything he's done with Zimbe. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a it has been beautiful character development to me i thought i saw and i saw in the last ever since kaplan's death because a bit a few moments before the the episode before he said you know that i don't side with you on this kate and then they continue um, and he doesn't seem to be even talking to her or anything. There was, yet I've seen a concern when she gets off the car. They they exchange a, 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 a I don't know, there's something going on there. And I thought, well, Dembe is going to start having really problems with Red because I think that as much as I understand that Red is in a survival mode. He has to maintain control of his organization. He has to value loyalty above all else to survive. I also think that there is an exception to every rule, and Kate should have been it. Yes, I agree. And I also think it goes back to what what Red told Zimbe while he was lying in that makeshift hospital room after being shot in the lung. And he said when Dembe was apologizing for, for, taking, for giving Liz access to, to Red's apartment, mm-hmm. He said, it's I understand one- why you did it. And he said, no, the blessing of an honest man. There you go. Blessing of an honest man. I I think that is the core. It was is when they were standing there talking to the guy that, that had uh, been killing the poachers. He said, this is what a good man looks like, I believe is the quote. It's a, uh, no, see that, see that, see that's what a good man does. I, it has been, time and time again, has been solidified that Dembe is a good man. I mean, we've seen it in action. We've seen it in words. Red has so much respect for the goodness in Dimbe's soul. And and I think that if it had not weighed on Dimbe, it would have tarnished that overall view. I, I, I think I got an idea what Dimbe was, was going through. I think that Dimbe was first extremely angry because he had seen the immense level of trouble that he had gone that red the pain red have gone through so i thought that dembe in a way he was first angry with kate because kate had uh hurt red she and... tortured red i mean in 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 dembe's mind she had basically put red through a torture that he didn't need to go through that while maybe Dembe did not agree with the fact that Red was keeping things from Liz, did not agree with, with everything that happened, he would not have gone to that extreme because he trusts Red. And and that's his choice. And But I think that he felt like Kate should have come to Red ver- and, and talked to him about it. Mm-hmm. Versus taking those extreme measures. And I think he has an extreme loyalty. And if you look at their past, there's no question on why. I mean, Red is his salvation. Yeah, Red is a mix between a father and a brother. And a savior. I mean, the man found him chained to a pole at 14 years old, malnutrition, beaten to hell... And burned, branded. Yeah, and, and saved him and nursed him back to hell, saw to his education, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, Red explained it. And, I mean, the the impression that must have made on a young, angry... I have trouble picturing Dembe as angry. I really do. Because he's just so zen about everything. The... The... For Red to be the one that gave him that peace, I think that his peace has been disrupted right now. Like, the man that Dembe became because of Red has been disrupted because of something that he did not stop Red from doing. And I think he blames himself. Yeah, I... I, Yeah. It was that, that comment that he made. He said, Dembe, you did nothing. He said, exactly. And it just... 
when good people do nothing sort of thing. And I think yeah. that's where Dembe is. It's that he's a good man. He has a conscience. He, he's got a, a more, he does terrible things. I mean, but, but he's got a very strong moral code and he knew it was happening and he did nothing. And that, I think that weighs on him stronger than killing a hundred bad men. I, I, I do wonder if he, he had an idea that maybe Red wasn't going to have a conversation with her or something. Um, lied but to I himself. Think, he lied to himself to make it. Make- yeah. I, I have a feeling that he, he was, he was really hurt at Cade betrayal of Red and I think that he didn't process that this was going to be it. I think that he knew that he wanted to, that he was going to take, drive them over there so Red would kill her. But I think that in a way, um, I, I think that he wanted Red to have come back with Kate. Oh, and, I and I don't think that since that moment that Red came back along, we we didn't get to see. There must have been some very interesting scenes in there, and and I I, I do think that 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 Red himself is actually getting pangs over. Everybody is talking about Kaplan, and I think that Red acted from. Um, uh, the cold that kept him alive of no mercy. But I think that Red failed to see the, the exception to that rule. Yeah, I agree. And I, I do agree with you that I think that Red feels guilt over it. I I think that he feels that guilt and that he, he is trying to bury that guilt as, as deeply as he possibly can. Because he needs to be cold about it. To, to be able to push forward, to do what he has to do, he cannot stop and think about it. But like you just mentioned, people like, like Brimley are bringing it up. I'm getting hitched on Saturday. Extend the, the invitation to Mr. Kaplan. People that... Um, Kaplan is... Red's introduced her as his better half before. I mean, she is just a constant. And... Mm, in, the, she, in, the, in the comic book, is she's, she's the one who's handling, like, everything that happens when Red dies. That we know now that she was, that Liz was placed in her hands under whatever circumstances that was. And she's been taking care of everything that Red had his life. She nursed him. She stayed to defend him. It was, it was not... It's not what you do because you have moved past an employee-employer relationship and into a family one. And I think that what Red was hurt and he handled the hurt badly. I agree. 100% agree with you on that. I, I do understand why he did it. He did it because that's what he had done. That's what he did to Newton Phillips. That what he did to Anslow Garrick. That what he has done to anybody who had betrayed him. But did not think well i mean he <laughs> i'm about to make a parallel here that i'm really there you hate. go i'm about to do the thing that i hate um it, it kind of <laughs> and it's because i expect better from red is really what it boils down to why i'm so upset with him over this and and i think that a lot of people expected better from red including dimbe i think dimbe tried to like like we we're talking about kind of tried to lie to himself and say well he's a better man than that but I, 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 my mind keeps going back to, to McCready in the car with the gun and, and, and Tom and holding the gun on him and Tom going, I'm more than just your operative. You raised me. And it's this idea of if someone screws you, you put them down like a dog. And Bill McCready was that man. He was the man that put anybody down like a dog if they crossed him. And that's who he was, and that's who his character was, and he got a bullet to the chest for it. Raymond Reddington should be better than that. And I think he is better than that. But right now, he's in a very dark place. And I'll be interested to see how the writers pull him back from that, because I... I have to believe as a viewer and as a fan of this show 
and is a huge Redemption fan, I have to believe that Raymond Reddington will find redemption by that final episode, even if he has to wade through the depths of hell to get there. I do mm. believe he'll find it. I don't know that he has a lot of things to to redeem himself. See, that's a that's a difference. I think that I don't. I am probably one of the few fans that don't think that Red has any guilt in any of these things that happened. I don't think that Red was directly responsible for any of this. I think he has been sin eating since a long time ago. I don't know. I, I, I think that maybe in some fashions, but I do think there's a lot of things that, whether he is actually responsible for or not, I think he feels guilt over. Yeah. Well, Kaplan is certainly one of them. He <laughs> should be. <laughs> does, he does feel pretty bad. And going into other parallels, should <laughs> we uh, go into the parallels about the the Tom, Liz, and Agnes? Yes. Yes. I We, we talked about the argument already, and... Um... And and one of the things that that I found interesting, back to that I I didn't mention earlier and I forgot to, um, but in in paralleling back to what's going on right now and the way she reacted to what Tom did, and paralleling that back to their conversation right before the wedding, mm -hmm. and um, when she said when when he came to her and said this is what's going on this is what happened, and he was straightforward with her and she said you know. I will help you carry your baggage if you'll help me carry mine. Right now, I think some of the problem, and not to take any of the weight off of Tom for the fact that he went behind her back because that was a choice that he made. He is responsible for that, whether he did it for good reasons, bad reasons, anything between. You know, we discussed that last week. Um, I do think Liz is trying, and I don't think she really has an emotional option here like i mean it's, it's not like there's just a switch you can flip on something like this she feels responsible and i thought the writers did such a fantastic job in structuring this in that that conversation when the, the first conversation between the keens back for this episode because she she said agnes is missing because of kirk's obsession with me meaning she is blaming herself entirely between that and the the comment that she started to make and then kind of faded off of of if our daughter was missing because of something that had nothing to do with me basically saying I would have done the exact same thing that you did mm -hmm. and I think it is weighing on her if you think about in the course of what we're looking at maybe I mean it's not even five years I don't think between the time that Red came back into her life, you know, in the pilot, and now. In which the concierge of crime that she had no memory of ever knowing before popped into her life with this obsession with her that has never really faded. <laughs> it's just gotten a little mm -hmm. stronger. And so here's Raymond Reddington that has an obsession with her. Here's Alexander Kirk that has an obsession with her. She is caught in between, as she said, and she doesn't have answers she has a lot of questions a lot of people giving her half answers possible answers maybe answers kirk's giving her more answers but there's no telling if they're true or not and it's all focused in on her her daughter in her eyes her daughter is 100 percent in trouble because of her this daughter mm -hmm. she hasn't even had a chance to appropriately bond with yet is yeah. in trouble because of her and i think it is just killing her with that weight and I don't I'm not sure Liz is capable at this point and that's not a knock to her it's just I mean it's just like I said there's no switch to flip you can't just say oh you know honey here take this part of the weight here <laughs> you know? well it's a, it's an interesting thing because I, the, there was a, a discussion that we've had but not on air from last uh, episode about and that's something that came to me like there is a difference in how Liz has bonded with Agnes that what Tom has bonded with Agnes. And I think if you add on top of this, the different, the way that she had from this obsession that everybody seems to have with her, and now that obsession has put her daughter in great danger. Exactly. 
And so I think that she feels very responsible for this. She is she is taking that all on herself. And at least I, I find it a great deal of character growth for her that she's acknowledging that's why she's snapping at everybody. And especially Tom got the brunt of it. And, and I give her major kudos for that because she, you know, three seasons ago she couldn't have ever acknowledged that. That, that there was something deeper another reason mm-hmm. she's she can at least see it she may not be able to fix it but she can see it and i think that'll it's still mm-hmm. hurting him that that he can't help her but that's not you know it's not something either of them can really fix at this point no. the fact that they can acknowledge it and they know that is going to help them tremendously and it it says great things for liz as a character that she's uh that that she's able to say that and I have in my notes here talking about the bonding discussion because you and I've talked a lot about that and I yes could, could you go through at least in in the generalization I'm not saying point by point but just kind of go mm-hmm. through you made a, a post on tumblr the other day we can repost it to our um to our different sites and such yeah uh, but the it, time uh Liz yeah. versus Tom and the time I was, uh, I had always considered that this whole thing between Liz's death, I consider, had just been a few days. But then I started reconsidering, Ali Blacklist um, was uh, questioning my timing, and I decided to take a quick look at that, uh, which turned out to be into not a such, such quick look. And I realized that it's been a month or so, possibly even longer, between the time of Liz's death to the time where Tom goes back to Cuba with Agnes. And in that time, they have done, this is a very pivotal time, not just for the baby in bonding with parents, but with parents bonding with babies. And in that moment, who's the one who's changing diapers, who's battling himself on how to swaddle her and change her and bathe her and rock her to sleep and sing to her and talk to her who have been through the bad nights and and all this is tom agnes for tom is a real baby real live baby that he has bonded with and for tom when when kirk takes her this is the farthest he has ever been from agnes he has not spent a day since before Agnes was taken without Agnes in his life since she was born. And he had fed her, he had cleaned her, he had brought her to sleep. He has been the only parent for Agnes. As contrary to Liz, who had done this enormous sacrifice of letting go of her newborn baby to give her the chance of having uh, a normal life, which was brain scheme from the beginning but that apart she hadn't bonded with Agnes she Agnes for her in order to survive something like that a woman who's not willing to give up her baby she's not giving her to an adoption and thinking well she's going to a good home she's doing this for the sake of her of her daughter in order to survive this she had to start thinking of Agnes in an abstract the baby you know, my daughter, but not the the warm baby in my arms is, is in an image. Probably what? Kaplan maybe sent her a, a picture of Agnes? Which, if I can cut in right here, it's something mm-hmm. that I've noticed, and that makes a lot of sense with what you're saying. And it's it's really funny, because people keep referring to, to Agnes as the baby, the baby, the child, the baby. And, and Liz keeps doing this, and it kind of struck me as funny, you know, and... I kind of get Tom doing it with people that that are kidnapping her. I mean, he's not gonna, mm-hmm. you know, it's, you know, you, you don't get the permission to use my daughter's name, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But but Liz doing it, you know, saying "Where's my baby? Give me," you know, it, it just struck me kind of as funny that she kept referring to Agnes as the baby versus as Agnes mm-hmm. when she was so. That is interesting. It was it was so pointed at, at naming her Agnes and I feel like she's used her name very she's used it rarely more, she's used it more around Tom in the last few episodes with Tom using her name than she had mm-hmm. before but it makes sense because it, it's what she had to do in order to be able to fake her death exactly. she had to start thinking of Agnes in an abstract way all she probably had if any is a picture that maybe Kaplan managed to send her but maybe not so Liz have actually 
held her baby for a few hours maybe before Kirkman found them and then again for a few minutes or maybe a couple of hours after she was with with Kirk in the in Cuba and that's all Liz have had of bonding so when you see that Kirk put a monitor in a room for Tom that's the farthest he has ever been from Agnes and this hurts and he's desperate because he knows his daughter is safe when he's in his arms now for Liz who has never been more than a few hours with Agnes this is the closest hit she has ever been so in a way they're both the reactions make perfect sense and I don't see it as much as as Tom going behind Liz back as Tom realizing that Liz is probably suffering from a bit of postpartum depression has not properly bonded with Agnes and is being manipulated by Kirk giving him all this giving her all this little information little things here and there and meanwhile Liz is saying but she's like almost like he's right there and she's about to touch the monitor why because that's what she has done for a month exactly if any so there there is there is a lot to be said and I and I tend to be far more um forgiving of Tom actions because I think that Liz is actually losing it a little she's hallucinating with with Katerina this questions in the middle of all this and hormonal thing of giving birth not being with her baby the desperation uh, faking the death and all for nothing and now they are there she is not dealing with this well not that she could this is a horrific situation for any woman but for her it's particularly horrific because she has no answers yeah i i agree and i i think that's a fascinating and and something that people really i would encourage people to think about when they're looking at this whole situation is is that time period because i i knew that there had been a decent amount of time because obviously she had she she, um had a c-section I mean, there has to be recovery time from that surgery. You know, I've had friends that have had C-sections. I've had, you know, various people I've known that have C-sections. It, it takes time to recover from that. They cut you open, you know, and pull the baby mm-hmm. out of you. And so, I mean, she would not have been flailing and fighting and all of that sh- that she did with Kirk's men, you know, a week after having, a, you know, a C-section mm-hmm. surgery. And so it's that that just would not have happened. She could not have physically done that without injuring herself, you know, so that we would have seen it. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, it would a month probably. I mean, I, I'm not a doctor. I don't, you know, I, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. But um, but a month seems about right to me you know to, to it, it might be even more because yeah. if you think it, i mean this is like a month is the minimum uh because she was probably kept in the hospital for a month but there are other things like when scotty goes to thailand to uh get the 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 hostages back that takes time yeah and i know that the the blacklist is big in teletransportation but they do tend to respect that kind of well, of time they went to berlin they went to to yeah, yeah. They, they the traveling the i mean those, those take hours and hours and hours and planning i also noticed that at the when when red graces uh scotty with a bullet she keeps the bandage for a little bit and then you see that when she's out of when she's uh, planning the whole thing with uh with tom she doesn't have the bandage anymore well, it, so it you know from, that it's like two weeks it goes from a a wrap around it like a thick wrap mm-hmm. to a band-aid to to nothing mm-hmm. and so it's it's a gradual thing over a couple episodes yeah um, all right. Uh, let's see. I, I have a note in here. Did you want to touch on this? I think that was your question earlier. Was, was that your question? Is that why I have this written down here? Would Tom be willing to take Agnes and leave Red? Uh, or, oh, yeah. And, and leave well, like, Red did with Liz? Was that your question? I'm trying to remember. I why was, I that yes. I, 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 I am I'm seeing interesting parallels in, in also in, in Liz with Katerina. Because Katerina seemed to have been... A lot of, of Liz having people obsessed with her 
And if you think about it, Tom probably started as an obsession too. You know, there was he was looking at her from a distance and eventually fell in love with her after, you know, a year or so of working for her. Yet, if you think about who the mother was, the mother was a apparently a KGB agent and described as a Pinko Matahari. And Matahari was a, 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 allegedly a, a operative that seduced men into revealing information. So she must have been a fairly fascinated woman. And no, I mean, if you're going to be one of the top operative, a, a legend, um, you're going to be fairly good in in uh, understanding what it is that may make men tick. And she obviously has it, whatever that is. But I don't think that that this quality of being obsessed over is about her as it is so much about Katerina. I think these two men are still fighting over Katerina. Oh, you mean Red and Kirk? Yes. yes. I agree with that. <laughs> I, and I think that I the Kater- Liz became an extension. Is a woman. Red, Liz is not so much and either Agnes one of their Liz. daughters. And Agnes from Liz. I mean, they, they are... Yeah. Yeah, and then that is like the 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 last thing. So I I do wonder about what is what is uh what's going to happen with this whole Katerina thing because they both um and now Liz have begun to hallucinate with Katerina. I I think that Katerina is going to eventually show up and that's just going to blow everyone's socks off. Um, Unless, I, of course, my theory is right, and she's, we already met her. <laughs> uh, I just got to throw a crazy theory once in a while. It's no fun being a theorist if you don't have crazy theories. There you go. Um, no, I, I don't think that Tom would take off with Agnes. I think that Liz means... I, I think Liz is his whole world. He made the comment to Jolene in season one. He goes, I've made this woman think that she's my entire world. I think that was true. I think Liz is his whole world and Agnes is now, Liz and Agnes are his whole world. I don't think there's one without the other for him. I don't think he can do that. I, I don't think he would be able to wrap his mind around taking her child from her in any format. Now, I don't imagine would... if he were in the, in the position that Red was with a Hobson choice. He saves one of them or he loses them both. I, I'm not sure I believe that, that Tom would believe in Hobson's choices. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of funny. Just I, I'm looking at the kind of life he's lived and the way he approaches things. And he he doesn't seem to like you have these two choices when someone tries to hand him this choice or this choice he he has that sort of personality it goes okay well what about option c over here and people go wait there's an option c and he's already running with it you Mm -hmm. know and so i don't believe that he would box himself into that and i I don't mean to say that as negative because i mean i think some people feel like they they are boxed into that but i don't think tom believes in the no win scenario he's kind of got a jim kirk sort of <laughs> approach to life mm. that, that he doesn't believe in in the uh in the no win scenario and so i i don't think i think he would fight for them both when when liz was hurt after the the uh, car wreck after the wedding they went yeah, into the hospital they went into the hospital and she said i just need to make sure my baby's okay and he goes well, I need them both healthy. His, his statement was, it's not one or the other, it's both. Mm-hmm. I need to make sure my wife and my child are okay. And I think that that's how he views it. They are a family, they are a team, and they, that is it. There are no ifs, ands, mm-hmm. or buts. They are doing this together. And I don't. I think if someone tried to give him a Hobson's choice, he'd give them the middle finger and walk off. <laughs> and go, we're going to take this other road. And that's Could the team. I, Could that's, be. That's how I see him. That's how I. It would be I an interesting him. parallel to Red, though, and put him in the same situation. And, and I, I have a feeling that, that they might, um, you know, they might want to explore that. I don't and, think and it would be if, here. What have I said? What have I said about feeling like they're breaking the mold? I think it would be brilliant. I would love it. It would be so fantastic to watch that parallel come up and Tom do something entirely different and go, no, I am making this choice. 
I am not this person. I am not this person. I am my own person, and this is what I am doing. Now, talking about that, and now about breaking mold and all that. Now, Liz is is put in a very interesting situation. In that phrase that she used to read, uh, his, she's caught between Tom and Kirk and Red and Kirk. Now, that puts Red and Tom in a very interesting position because now you're getting three men in her life. Because now Aram is, is, is so and a caught husband. up in... Two fathers yeah. and a husband. It sounds like a really bad sitcom. <laughs> yeah, it's they're all in in now you. But the interesting thing is this: I put Red and Tom in in more or less a very similar position, and wrestler too. They're all saying the same thing. He has your child, Liz, and Liz is like, oh, he doesn't want to hurt her. Oh no, he's my father. He just wants to get to me, and everybody's saying, no, 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 no. I, I find it interesting that they are. That they're going there with that parallel. I, that I, I do find it interesting, and I I do think that they're. <laughs> we think you're going to see like Tom and and Red interacting, as we see in Wrestler and Tom. Maybe, and I I feel like they're taking different approaches with it, though. I think that we saw that when when Tom shifted and tried to talk to Liz and explain to her, you know this. This is why I'm going to start giving you more information. Tom is not withholding information anymore. He did it very briefly and then was reminded mm -hmm. very strongly that he does not need to do that. Mm -hmm. And Red is under no such feelings. He's going to keep what he's going to keep. He's going to do what he's going to do. He's Raymond Reddington and nobody's going to convince him otherwise. And so I think that we might see a... a goal that is the same that a distrust that is the same a goal that is the same and yet i don't think that tom and red will approach it the same because i think that red is going to be very unyielding on things and i think tom is he he reads liz's emotions i mean when they their first marriage that was something big he did that he read her emotions and he shifted to to Ooh. accommodate her in any way that she needed and i think that he's he's continued to do that because that's just something he's very good at and it, mm -hmm. it's something that she probably likes pretty well because you know i mean he's <laughs> he's doting on her he, he's the doting husband that's what he does that is very much tom it, it was not just an act it's what he does because he enjoys doing it and i think he's going to while i don't think he's going to give and say yeah kirk's obviously a nice guy because you think he is i do think that he's going to respect her fears a bit more or re respect her her turmoil a bit more than red does red just says you know get over it you know this is a bad man you should take it because i'm saying so and i think tom will will take a much gentler approach with it and i don't want to say that he's going to try not manipulate her into it, but but try to explain his side of it a bit more and try to take mm -hmm. a bit kinder approach towards it. Because this is his wife. It's not a child that he's trying to gear in the right direction as our Red and Liz's relationship. I mean, you know, biological child or not, who knows. But but that's how Red treats Liz. We've talked about that before, that he directs her. He, you know, he, he positions her as he wills because that's what he does with people. And he's trying to do that right now. And I think that Tom will have a bit of a less controlling approach. And I don't, I don't know that for sure. But from what I've seen in previews, from what I see in the shift this last episode, that's the direction I see him moving in. So I, I don't. Do you think it's an interesting thing that they've been lobbed in the same general area, but it wasn't Tom and Red against Kirk. It was Tom and Kirk. She's caught between Tom and Kirk. She's taught, caught between Red and Kirk. Tom mm -hmm. and Red are not put in the same exact category. Same side, perhaps, but not exact same category. Well, I, I took it to mean that she's saying, you know, Tom wants something opposed to what Kirk wants, and Red wants something opposed to what Kirk wants, and I'm in the middle of all this because I want to protect Kirk because I want answers from Kirk or because you know I may think that he's my father. 
Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I think that I think that if it came down to it, Tom would have zero, uh, not zero issue, because it would hurt Liz and that would hurt him. But I think he would be much more inclined to put a bullet in, in Alexander Kirk's head than Liz would. I think he would pause... I'm not sure he would pause. If it would save Agnes's life, he would not pause while Liz would. And and that's not a knock towards Liz. It's just the the emotional complications mm-hmm. of the situation. And and I think that that's probably scaring both Tom and Red, and they're mm-hmm. handling it differently. Uh, you know, I yeah. think they both see it. They both see that potential for pause at the wrong moment. And I think that's why mm. Red left her behind. And well, because he yeah. didn't want that to be a risk. He didn't want to put her in that situation and make her make that choice. Because if she paused, she could be dead. Red could be dead. Agnes could be dead. You know, and versus just Kirk being dead. And I don't think, <laughs> with the exception of Liz being sad over it, I don't think Tom or Red would mourn Kirk's loss at all. <laughs> Did we talk about the gnome? There was another <laughs> parallel, and this gnome lived to tell the story. Oh, it did, and Wrestler's face was so beautiful. He just, because I missed it. It was so funny. A friend of mine on Tumblr texted me afterwards, and she goes, why is David Metzger t- uh, tweeting about a gnome? What did I miss? I said, I didn't see a gnome. I would have seen a gnome. And so the roomie and I backed it up, and we went back, and and, I mean, he stopped turned and looked at it like oh my gosh it's following me <laughs> yes yeah. going oh Raz. <laughs> see so when all is good between wrestler and, and tom gnomes live <laughs> it's gnomes are safe when tesler is <laughs> tesler's on the same side <laughs> yep I thought it was hilarious, and I, and I love that they put those little touches because it, it shows a, a, a level of detail for continuity that I know they have. You know, in, I, I agree with you in doing rewatches and, and every one that I every one of them that I've done, I'm more and more in awe. And I think you just gotta be patient because a lot of the things that look like continuity problems are not; they're clues. Yes. Okay. I think our last thing on here. Um go over my notes uh the question of the week we don't want to forget that oh yes yeah uh so we posed the question why is red still holding back information which is really the question of the series to be totally honest Mm -hmm. and so uh we we got a couple answers on twitter facebook and tumblr and when we posted this we we asked everybody to remember that we were reading these and to keep them (laughs) a wee bit shorter than they were last week um because i this fandom seems to be made up of a lot of writers like everybody's just very well very well spoken slash written and it's it's really interesting there's a very there's a lot of intelligent people in our fandom Mm -hmm. it's it's always kind of left me in awe it's it's fascinating uh a lot of us disagree on various things and that's great and that's fine but it's people tend to at least write it down very well it's impressive um which also can tend to uh t- 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 tend towards length there's the phrase um so cindy over on facebook or yeah facebook um made the comment said uh as far as red being tight-lipped there are still things that we don't know obviously and red has been accused by many fans of being unstable but i disagree red has always had an agenda for everything that he does and so mm-hmm. she believes that there is an agenda coming that we just haven't seen yet. I tend to agree. Devil's Advocate over on Tumblr mm-hmm. said, uh, The bitter side of me tends to think Red- Reddington is being egotistical. I used to think the only reason Reddington refused to give Liz answers because he had done something or maybe that Katarina had something. And if Liz finds out about it, she will forever hate Reddington or Katarina, which is interesting. I hadn't thought about hating Katarina. Yes, it is. So that that was Devil's Advocate's uh, statement is, is a mm-hmm. possibility there. There was a, one more, right? Oh, there were several over here. Yeah. Um, DeGizzy. <laughs> she said, uh, because I, I'm going to edit this one a bit uh, for in case we have any younger listeners. Because mm-hmm. uh, he's a freaking self-centered idiot <laughs> was her statement. <laughs> 
Um, brighter in white on Tumblr. This was one that I mentioned earlier. Um, her response was, I think that it honestly boils down to Red's desire to remain in control. I don't mean that in a negative sense exactly. I just think it's a desire to control Liz uh, stems from his desire to protect her. Uh, regardless of if you're a daddy gator or not, I think Red has proven that he sees Liz as a child. He has to protect and care for Keep secrets from her because he is trying to shield her from things that he doesn't think she can handle. We had one more off Facebook mm -hmm. that, that fell kind of in line. Uh, someone named Elise, <laughs> who, who I recognize off of Twitter and, and Tumblr as well. Uh, it says, I do not have a full theory, but a mere inkling that he would be committing a betrayal were he to, were he to speak the truth. And that falls in line with a lot of the stuff that you've said about, you know, protecting mm -hmm. somebody. Uh, someone on Twitter, uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, so I'm sorry if I mispronounce your, your Twitter name. I'm sorry, because you're awesome, and I talk to you. Uh, Janie Ellie? Janie Ellie, maybe? <laughs> um, and so she said probably he did something, uh, because he probably did something terrible, uh, talking about Red. Ah. Uh, and so that's, that's, uh, there seems to the be. Guild, it's a guild yeah. party, yes. And so, anyway, that, those seem to be the basics. You know, he's either protecting someone else or he feels guilty about something. Seem to be the the two the two big main ones. things. Yeah. So it's and what it's do you think? We haven't talked about what you think. I I think I did mention earlier that I tend to fluctuate back and forth really bad. That that there are times that I feel like that that red is that there is something in his past that he feels guilty about. Whether it's something he's responsible for or not, I think is up in the air. But either something that he he feels like he should have done better, I suppose. Um, kind of like Liz is in that situation now that she feels like she's responsible for for uh, Agnes's disappearance because these men are obsessing over her and they're coming after her, and so she feels responsible. And so I I think there's probably something in there that Red feels responsible for that he's trying to protect her from, basically. And either for himself, so that she's not angry at him, uh, because I, I do think that her leaving permanently and hating him would, would devastate Red as badly as her dying. I, I think that that would be the case. Probably more. Yeah, I, I think that's a possibility, because he would still know she was out there, but like, if it were to ever come around, you, you have the theory that Kirk may try to make Liz kill Red, and yes, I think, I think if, that is his objective. If, I think if that ever were to come to pass, that, that you know, Liz were It'd be at the that worst point, death ever. Oh, it just, it would... And I think that that is exactly what motivates Red now in doubting Liz and thinking the first thing, because he knows what Kirk is going to try to do. Oh. I think that is his main problem and his main anxiety is that he knows exactly what Kirk is going to try. He's going to try to get Liz to kill Red. I, in fact, I'm not sure that that argument that she remembered was accurate at all or that she was always trained to kill Red. What do you mean? That Kirk told, taught her to to um, kill Red. Interesting. And, you th you and think that, that Red was the one she shot because Kirk encouraged her to do so? Yeah, I think that she thinks it may have aiming at a man having an argument with his mother. I think that those memories may still be not accurate. And even if he tr she tried to kill Kirk, I think she shot Red. I think Red is a man that is face down. In, because if you think, if you look at those scenes, the most interesting things about those shooting scenes is that the man she sees... Uh, having the argument first we see um, an argument between two men one in a hat and one without a hat and we see the face is the man it, one of the men it's the man that she then she shoots right one of those that having a fight with another man then we see that the fight is not really between two men but is between a man and Katerina then but Katerina changes appearances from a very feminine looking woman to that figure standing by the man down that looks like a, dra a, a man in drag. So almost like she was told that there was a woman, but she had seen a man, and her mind kind of makes a composite and comes 
with that idea to kind of make sense of of the of of her memories and then the man that she shoots is a man in a dark raincoat with you know a belt and ties on the on the arms and the man down is a man in a camel rain uh, uh, coat a, a winter coat and a shorter coat not the long coat that the man is in the argument is having. So I think that something happened there and she's still substituting memories in there. And the man she shot was red because she was supposed to be red. And that's what the painting means. I'm going to get her to kill you again. And that's possible. I mean, and, and people have theorized before that, uh, going back to, um, alias, oh. uh, that Eisendrath was on, um, mm. the, that they had the, the bit in there. I've, I'm only about two seasons in to watching the show, but, um, this is supposed to be a good one it's really good yeah i'm Mm. I'm about two seasons in i really like it it's it's not i don't find it nearly as deep as the blacklist but it it could just be because i'm not smacked up in the middle of the fandom i'm a casual viewer Mm -hmm. of it um but 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 they had uh children being being basically brainwashed (laughs) into being soldiers that could be activated later on uh Mm -hmm. you know to being the perfect spies basically and th- there have been theories about wondering if Katarina had done that to, to Liz. And I'm wondering, with what you're saying, if maybe, in a way, Red, or, uh, Kirk did that to, to try to kill Red. If I he- think then that that might have been it. Because if, if, if imagine if Kirk was, at, was training Liz to do that and then sending her back. It, it's, I think that the situation is far more complex. I'm just and imagining she- a four-year-old child shooting a gun i i don't remember what kind of gun that is i i don't know if i've ever looked it up or anything uh there's actually a fantastic wikipedia site for weapons on the blacklist that if you if you're a fan fiction writer go check it out because <laughs> mm. you can find it all out um but, but i'll have to look that up and see if, if anybody's figured that one out but um but by but, the way tom, regard, tom only had glocks uh i'm not sure that's true I'm in the sure table? Um, no, the ones that he had, but, not the ones that he acquired afterwards. But, but the um, you have a four-year-old child that is able to not only take the safety off of a handgun, but aim it and fire. And you know, accurate, no, exactly. And Aiming hit. was the the weird part I, because she did aim. I because I you know what I I've shot a handgun before and I have horrible aim as an adult with you know decent you would assume having better aim than a child would you know it you know small small little child trying to aim up at somebody i just in the the kickback that guns have and all of that she was trained that's for sure i'm just i have been impressed with that since that scene that and, and i've always thought that there's a little bit more to that because a four year old kid took that man down and she didn't seem to have an issue with the recoil. She didn't have an issue Mm-mm. with the aiming. The I mean, weight like, of the gun or nothing. And I don't claim to be a gun expert by any means, but there are just certain things that come with shooting a gun that she seems to Yeah, we're not talking with. about a, about a small... We're not talking about two kids playing. Yeah. She took the gun. She aimed. Yeah, and shot. And, and shot. And hit. And hit the target enough to take him down. It's not like she grazed him. She took him to the ground. Yep. So that is that to me, it's a it's something to be said because we keep seeing, oh, well, she remember. She said she remember. Same goes for when Red when she's discussing the night of the argument, the night of the fire argument. And she tells, is that what they were talking about? And we tend to think, oh, we know what she remember. But Red doesn't. She wasn't narrating the argument. She was reliving it and when dr orca orchard asked her she was answering but she wasn't like doing a step-by-step of what was going on dr orchard had to ask so red has no real idea of what liz remembers so they're coming from a different they think um, red may think that liz remember things that she doesn't and liz may still have manipulated memories and he's not going to volunteer information in case she doesn't that's the last thing he's going to do is volunteer information indeed 
I, I, so I think that in, in, there is a lot of that to be said about those scenes and the things that we haven't learned that that may suddenly put some light into what exactly is so special about Liz. Is it just about Katerina or is it because being Katerina's daughter and somebody else's daughter, maybe Kirk, and being trained as an agent? Because remember, there is a, also a point where he says your most prized asset in the U.S. will be lost. And yes, it, that could be that could be Diaz, the senator, but is it? I always thought that they were talking about Agnes at that point. But it's an asset. Agnes is... Well, if he thought that he was going to use her to survive, I mean, mm. regardless if it's his granddaughter or not and an emotional connection, if he if she was his path to survival, you know, prolong his life until she was old enough to, but, to use but, the But having that will not, will not do anything. Because at this point, they're talking about if he does not go and give testimony in front of the Senate about the charges of of dealing in, in uh, dirty oil, he's going to lose his most prized asset. He wasn't going to snatch Agnes herself himself. He could have Agnes snatched by anyone and not te- giving testimony does not affect that asset if you're talking about her like an asset it has to be something that by not going into that to to give testimony he's losing and is not senator diaz so we're going to wrap up this episode uh for for the week and so uh, leaving off on a little better feelings than we did last week at least for for me as a shipper uh more Mm -hmm. encouraging um i i do feel like because i i am very much of the opinion that the Keens will likely be together through the spinoff. Uh, I, I feel that they have made, they have spent a lot of time and a lot of effort showing how solid they are. And that's just what they've continued to do. Even through this argument is show that they're solid. They, they are a, I don't want to call them a realistic couple because I mean, come on, how many spies and federal agents get together? Um, <laughs> but, but, but the, the way that they handled the argument and the stress and everything feels very, very organic in the way they handle all of that. And uh, so I, I think that this left with a, uh, left me with a much better <laughs> view of That's next in your, week. in your little shipper's heart. Yes, yes. my shipper heart's yes. more intact. I'm terrified for Kirk on the ledge next week. I, that's terrifying me. I just, all I need, Blacklist, is Agnes home and safe with her family. That's, that's what I need. This is my request. Please bring her home. See, I am, I, I must have a much darker, um, I do have them, you know. I am, I actually love having Agnes in danger because to me that goes with the theme of a Blacklist. It's children in danger is one of the things that drives the Blacklist. You know, and if you be- think about it, the reason why I love Tom and Liz together is because they both were children in danger. She can be in danger with her parents. They'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> she will, I see. That child I, I will see. always be in danger, but at least she can be in danger with her folks. I, I see. I see a very. Um, a, a, to me, that scene is, yeah, you know, yes, terrifying. But it is an interesting scene because Kirk is, is almost like he's going to jump with a baby. Too. This wraps the episode of, of uh, the fifth episode of Keen Mind. We love having your feedback. Keep leaving it for us and any of our SoundCloud or Twitter or Facebook or YouTube, tw- Tumblr. ITunes. Oh my God, we got a lot. SoundCloud. <laughs> you need to take a breath in between that. SoundCloud and um, YouTube. YouTube. And uh, if you have any special requests, that you uh, want to uh, things that we you want us to address uh, from the episode, please leave us and also be thinking about the ep- the questions that you have of the things that you want us to um, address for the hiatus. Yep, and thank you so much for listening. We love you guys, and we will see you or hear from you next week. Bye bye. Bye.